morning, everyone. Welcome to our weekly online Eucharist here in the chapel of St. Francis and St. Clair at St. James Episcopal Church in Goshen, New York. We have resumed our two Sunday indoor services at 9 a.m. and 10.30 here at St. James. These will continue as long as the infection rate remains low. Members of St. James will need to make reservation for two services a month due to limited seating during the pandemic. For those of you who cannot attend, I am continuing these online services for the duration of the pandemic. Included in my Sunday email is a prayer for spiritual communion for those of you at home who cannot partake in receiving the body and blood of Christ with us. Please join Deacon Tom, Sharon, and me now in the Holy Eucharist for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. O oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence, 
Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder, and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful, and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will, he will judge, judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the past 10 years, the hobby of metal detecting has become very popular and made popular by TV series and YouTube videos. A few years ago, my wife and I enjoyed watching a British show on PBS called The Detectorist about a quirky group of people in a metal detecting club in Britain. The allure of searching for buried treasure is something that appeals to many people. I remember as a kid thinking about and actively digging for buried treasure in the backyard. 
One of my favorite YouTube channels is by a man in Germany who metal detects and finds everything from Roman coins to last, to last week's change. Yet the gold standard of metal detecting, the holy grail of the hobby, came to light 28 years ago. On November 16, 1992, metal detectorist Eric Laws went out in his home village of Hawks in Suffolk at the request of a local farmer, Peter Watling, who had lost a prized hammer on one of his fields and thought that Laws might help him turn it up. Laws didn't find the hammer, but he still did discover something else. Spoons, coins, and silver and gold jewelry. Laws and Watling immediately notified the Suffolk County Council, who owned the field on which Watling was a tenant farmer, and a team of professional archaeologists descended on the site. They discovered the rest of what has become known as the Hawks Hoard, the largest find of late Roman artifacts ever made in Britain. Because the hoard was contained in a large box, it was designated a treasure trove. In other words, something that had been hidden with the intent of retrieving it, rather than just lost or abandoned. This is not typical of metal detecting. It's more like winning the lottery. Generally what is found in metal detecting is loose change and other little metal things like buttons and trash, casual losses, things not deliberately buried, but accidentally discarded. It amazes me how much loose change some of these metal detectorists find. One guy on YouTube finds buckets of change on the beaches of Long Island. How is it that people who have a tendency to worry about their money and hanging on to it, manage to lose so much historically that it seems that metal detectorists never run out. Which brings me to today's Gospel reading. And the Pharisees and Herodians worrying about hanging on to their money and asking Jesus if they should lawfully pay taxes to the Romans. It would seem that people have, for at least 2,000 years, not liked paying taxes. When people are polled, they are generally okay with taxes if they feel that they are getting something in return and that others pay their fair share. Under the Roman law, taxes were both a source of revenue for the empire, but also Rome's mechanism for subjugating people. Who would want to pay the bill for an oppressive regime that treated Israel as a vassal state in a repressive way? In Jesus' time, Jews were not only mistreated by Rome, they were heavily taxed on top of it. There was a ground tax, a portion of what you produced agriculturally, an income tax, and a poll tax. So we have the Pharisees and the Herodians ganging up on Jesus by asking the tax question in public in an attempt to entrap him with a no-win situation. The question was meant to offer Jesus no alternative but to either defy the Romans or offend those who are resisting Rome, which likely included most of Jesus' supporters. Not unlike today's politics, Jesus had to contend with an element of populism that made the matter of taxes a real problem in the actual ministry of Jesus. But Jesus was wiser. He asked to see a denarius, which was stamped with the emperor's head. In ancient days, coinage was the sign of kingship, and still is in parts of the world today. As soon as a king came to the throne, he struck his own coinage, 
and that coinage was held to be the property of the king whose image it bore. Jesus asked, Whose image is on the coin? The answer was that Caesar's head was on it. Well then, said Jesus, give back to Caesar. It is his. Give to Caesar what belongs to him, and give to God what belongs to him. With this unique wisdom, Jesus teaches us a very important principle about life. Every Christian has a double citizenship. People are citizens of the country in which they happen to live. Some governments are good and provide for the common welfare of their citizens, and some do not. Historically, paying taxes does not mean that the tax is paid always as a vote of support for the government. In Jesus' time, paying taxes acknowledged Rome's political power, but not its moral authority to rule. That moral authority belongs to God. Which is why Jesus quickly adds that the one must pay to God the things that are due to God. It's a reminder that before we are citizens of any earthly nation, we are first and foremost citizens of the kingdom of God. These two citizenships need not clash, but often they do. Following God's will and the teaching of the gospel has placed Christians throughout history in opposition to the secular powers. And this will continue as long as humans are in charge. I think this text is really not about money and paying taxes, but a deeper reflection about how we as Christians learn to interact with the governing authorities and yet maintain our identity and honor our callings as Christians. In our current political climate, some Christians find that the governing authorities and their consciences may line up pretty closely. Others find this more and more difficult as the governing authorities continue to be at odds with their conscience and understanding of the gospel. It's my experience that people of good conscience are on both sides of many of the issues dividing our society today. It doesn't signify who is correct, but both are sincere in their opinions. So what do we do? The key might be to find a way to proclaim the good news of God's love for us, while also continuing to call people to think about what, what is God's good news and what God's justice might look like in the world. Essential to this endeavor is being open to listening for that call while realizing that others might hear it differently than we do. Then the question is, can we trust that God is at work even in those who believe and think differently than we do? We are not only living through a worldwide pandemic, we are also living through the most culturally polarizing times any of us have experienced in our lifetimes. I have witnessed friendships end, divisions in family life, and a general enmity between people on opposing sides of the political spectrum. This is where we need to hear Jesus' message about to whom we belong as citizens of the kingdom of God. We are to love one another, regardless of our political and cultural values, and to bear no malice towards others in our hearts. It's much easier said than done. We live in a time in which competing powers and influences vie to own us, to sway us, to capture our hearts. The question raised by our Gospel text today is, can we navigate our times and make our priority our allegiance to God and God's love first 
in our lives? Can we see that our true treasure is not in the coins in our pockets that we lose all the time, or the balance of our bank accounts, or the blind adherence to ideologies and political platforms, but the very relationships that we have with each other? Someone once said, all politics is local. And that is because it is about our relationships with each other, the people that we know, that come in and out of our lives and are part of our daily life. We are headed into some very difficult months ahead. More than ever, we need to hear the words of Jesus. We need to stay focused on the love that binds us, that unites us in spite of our differences. The love that can clearly delineate the things of the world and the work of the kingdom. Amen. Together now let us proclaim and profess our faith as it's found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Father Carl, Deacon Tom, and all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That, that they may be delivered from their distress. We especially pray for Virginia Rudy, Emma Levine and family, Lenore Volpe, Nikki Maybe, Timothy Fogarty, Richard Mather, Caitlin Stevens, Jan Connell, Charlotte Grossman, Darlene Martinez, George Herrick, Wendy Lee Maybe. Anna Perez, Richard Fontana, Lou and Sonia, Nancy Carp, Milagros Lofton, Madeline Nault, Ronald and Angela Bracciante, Nick Maybe, Adhira Wolf, Jane and Ward Coleman, Crystal Martinez, Becky Quinn, Norm and Jan Terracino, Becky Pacella, Connor, Cameron, Marissa and Keith, Jim Tarvin, Johanna Bauman, Edie Goldman, Ray Bally, Josh Dela Cruz, 
James Mahoney, Terry Dahl, and the Feeney family. We remember those patients that are in hospice care, and we pray for the blessing and health of all our parish members. In the aggregate cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of New York and Amritsar in India. We pray for all military personnel serving overseas and at home, especially Master Sergeant Stephen Brown serving in San Antonio, Specialist Amanda Volpe stationed in Fort Rucker, Petty Officer Raphael Rispoli serving in the Coast Guard, Lieutenant William Ash stationed in California, and Lieutenant Samuel Dickinson stationed in Okinawa. We pray for an end to hatred, prejudice, violence, and racism in our country and in the world, and the wisdom and compassion to overcome our divisions and mistrusts as members of the human family and as beloved children of God. Comfort and heal those who are sick with the coronavirus throughout the world, protect their caregivers, doctors, nurses, first responders, and last responders. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially remember Vincent Terracino, and for those who have died from COVID-19, and for those who have died in the past week in hospice care. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Now let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O Lord God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you. And also Amen. with you. Today the Holy Eucharist will be offered for the repose of the soul of Vincent Teresino. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image, 
and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. For those of you at home who cannot receive the Eucharist with us, I invite you to pray the prayer for spiritual communion. In union, O God, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where blessed body and blood are being offered for your holy people, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may ever be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, 
Oh, let nothing ever separate me from your love. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.